Find the number of elements in sets A, B, and C, and they give us a lot of information, so let's start off using it. I guess the easiest thing to put in right away is they told us that the intersection of A and B was null. Well, the intersection of A and B is the uh, area that overlaps between A and B, and if it's null, that means that there's nothing, nothing in there, and there are no elements, so there are zero elements in the top part, of that overlapping area, and there's zero elements in the bottom part of that overlapping area. So that was actually pretty easy to get a pretty easy place to get started. It also gave me the interior, the inside part, which is where I like to start with. They also tell me that when I intersect A with C, I'm supposed to get 11. But if you look at it, I already had zero in the interior, the, the absolute middle. So in order to get 11, all 11 of them would have to go there because of that zero in the middle. I'll just keep up this process. They also tell me that B intersected with C gives me three, but because there's already a zero there, all three of them have to be inside that shaded area, so they all three have to be here, because you have none in here. Now you've got something with differences. It says that the number of elements in C minus A is 7, but think about what that means. C itself is what I've shaded yellow, but when you say C minus A, that means you take out anything in that yellow area that also happens to be in A. So it's like A takes a byte out of C. So what you're left with is that 3 and something else has to add up to 7, so it must be 4. They gave us another difference, and they said this time to do A minus C. So this time you start off with A and let C take a bite out of it. So if you take the set A and let C take a bite out of it, and you're supposed to get 1 for the resulting quantity, if there's a 0 here and you need 1 altogether, that 1 has to go there. So if you take A, let C take a bite out of it, and if that yellow area has to be 1, and if you already know that this is 0, then the 1 has to go there. Then we just keep moving along. They told us that there are three elements in the entire set B, but you already had three here, so there could, couldn't be any more anywhere else. So every other area has to be 0. Every other subregion of, of uh, Set B has to be zero because if there are only three and, there, and you have three here, everything else has to be zero. And I think the last piece of information is that the whole thing, the whole ball of wax, if you add up everything in the universal set, you're supposed to get 19. Well, if you add up all those numbers that we already have, you end up with 19. Well, that means you can't have anything else out there, so that has to be a zero. They actually ask you to find the number of elements in sets A, B, and C. I should now say that the number of elements in set A is 11 plus 1 plus 0 plus 0. That would be 12. And I'd say the number of elements in set B would be 0 plus 0 plus 3 plus 0, which is 3. And the number of elements in set C would be 11 plus 0 plus 3 plus 4, which would be 18.